Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's around 19 degrees above zero. We haven't had our first snow just flurries the other day. November 12th, 2022. And I'll read a topic, a verse on corruption. With, uh, well, I guess there's corruption everywhere, whether it's uh, national or global. But I decided to choose this topic after men much news about the crypto world, world FTX and um, just the economics and financial stuff going on and political stuff or I'm not referring to anything particular specific on political but there's corruption everywhere there's even corruption even in churches and uh, any institutions because of man-made so this this Bible verse I'm gonna read is from 2nd Peter 2 and these are many Bible verses on just the theme of corruption Father God we pray, Father God, for just uh, justice and your hand to intervene in any injustice going on in any institution that's in our world or country. We pray, Father God, for that you, uh, we don't do any uh, rebellion or uh, what do you call it, um, try to pay back of what's wrong but that you you do the um, your hand will be upon the injustice going on in Jesus name amen all right I'll read second Peter chapter 2 in the New Testament a book of epistles false teachers condemn but false prophets who also rose among the people just as their will also be false teachers among you. They will secretly bring in destructive heresies. They will even deny the master who brought them, bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their immoral ways, and as a result, the way of the truth will be malig malign. In their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle and her destruction does not slumber. For God did not spare angels when they sinned, but threw them into show. He put them in chains of gloomy darkness to be held until the judgment. He did not spare the ancient world. He preserved only Noah, a proclaimer of righteousness, along with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. He devastated the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, reducing them to ashes, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. He rescued Lot, a righteous man, deeply troubled by the shameless immorality of the wicked. For that righteous man, while living among them, was tormented in his righteousness. Righteous soul, day after day, by lawless greeds he saw and heard. Therefore, the Lord certainly knows how to rescue the godly from trials. And how to keep the unrighteousness being punished until the day of judgment. Especially those who follow after the flesh in its unclean desires and who despite the Lord's authority. Brazen and arrogant, these people do not tremble while slandering glorious things. Yet even angels, though stronger and more powerful, do not bring a slanderous charge against them before the Lord. But these people are like irrational animals, creatures of instinct born to be captured and killed. They malign what they don't understand, and in their destruction, they will be utterly destroyed. They will be paid back for what they have done. Evil for evil, they consider carousing in broad daylight a pleasure. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deceitful pleasures while feasting together with you. They have eyes full of adultery that never stop sinning, enticing unstable souls. They have hearts trained in greed, a cursed brood. They have abandoned the straight way. They have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of wickedness, but he received a rebuke for his own wrongdoing. A dumb donkey spoke with a man's voice and put a stop 
to the prophet's madness. These people are springs without water and mist driven by a storm. The gloom of utter darkness has been reserved for them, for by mount mouthing grandiosites that amount to nothing, they entice essential fleshly passions. Those who are barely escaping from those who live in error, they promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. For a person is a slave to whatever has overcome him. For if, after escaping the world's pollutions through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, they again become entangled in these things and are overcome, the end for them has become worse than the beginning, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of, un of righteousness than after learning about it to turn back from the holy commandment passed on to them. What has happened to them confirms the truth of the proverb. A dog returns to its vomit, and a scrubbed pig heads right back into the mud. And that's the book of Second Peter 2, Book of Epistles. And it's one of many Bible verses on corruption. So, if you feel like you need to pay back what's been wrong to you, the Lord will take care of it. Give it to the Lord. He will uh, intervene. Just pray and ask God to deal with the corruption. In Jesus' name, there is power in the name of Jesus.